All right, guys, in this video, we will learn about React portals. React portals provide a way to render children into a DOM node that exists outside the DOM hierarchy of the parent component. Now, what does that mean? Well, so far, we have had one DOM element in our HTML that we were mounting the React application into. If I go into the public folder and index.html, you can see that element is the element with id is equal to root. In our index.js file, we use react-dom.render and mount our app component onto the root element. So if we take a look at the browser, in the DOM tree, every single React component in our application falls under the root element. That is, the div element with id is equal to root. What React portals provide is the ability to break out of this DOM tree. So you can render a component onto a DOM node that is not under this root element. Let me show you how to use portals with a simple example. The first step is to add a DOM node that falls outside the root element. So in index.html, right below the root element, I am going to add another div tag with id is equal to portal root. For the second step, I am going to create a new component. I will create a new file called portaldemo.js. And within the file, I am going to use the React snippet RFCE to create a functional component. In the JSX, I will simply add a heading that says portals demo. After that, I will include the component in app component. If you now save the files and take a look at the browser, you should be able to see the text portals demo. If I inspect the element, you can see that the element falls under the root element and not under the portal root element. Let's change that. For step three, we will use react dom dot create portal method to insert this component under the portal root node. So in portal demo component, at the top, we need to import the react dom package. Then in the render method, instead of simply returning the JSX, we are going to return react dom dot create portal and the method takes two parameters. First parameter is the JSX you want to render, which is the heading portals demo. And the second parameter is the DOM node to mount the element onto. So document dot get element by ID portal hyphen root, which is the ID of our second div element in index.html. All right, if you format the code, save the files and take a look at the browser, you should still be able to see the text portals demo. But this time, when I inspect the element, you can see that the h1 tag is under the portal root DOM node and not the root DOM node. So in your React application, even though all the components are children to the app component and the app component is mounted onto the root DOM node, it is possible to break away from that and mount on any DOM node that you wish to using React portals. And let me tell you that the first parameter to create portal can be any element that React can render. It can be numbers, strings, JSX, or even components. All right, now that we know what portals can do for us, the next question is why do we need them? One of the use cases which is brought up is having to deal with a parent component's CSS when the child component is a modal, a pop-up, or a tooltip. There is already an example created by Ken Dodds that we can make use of. I'm at this code sandbox link, which will of course be in the description. First, we will take a look at the demo with portals, and then I will remove the portal and show you what happens. Let me start with index.html. 
you can see that we have two div tags one with id equals root and the other with id modal root in index.js we have a reference to both the elements next we have a modal component there is a bit of styling and within the modal content we display whatever is passed as children and we have a button to close the modal but the most important part is that we are using a portal so we have react dom dot create portal the first parameter is the jsx and the second parameter is the modal root dom node in the app component there is a bit of text which you can see on the right hand side and there is a button that works with the state to open and close the modal we also have the modal component nested inside app component if i now go to the ui show modal and it opens close and it closes so it works perfectly fine now let me remove the portal so that the modal is rendered under the app component which falls under the root dom node so i'm going to remove react dom dot create portal and the second parameter if you now head back to the ui and click on the modal you can see that the modal breaks why well if you can see the code in the app component the modal component falls under a div tag which has a max width of 400 as a result the modal also has a width restriction now and that messes up the ui so sometimes it's useful to insert a child into a different location in the dom and portals help you do that the last point to discuss about portals is event bubbling what you should know about portals is that even though a portal can be anywhere in the dom tree it behaves like a normal react child in every other way this includes event bubbling so an event fired from inside a portal will propagate to ancestors in the containing react tree even if those elements are not ancestors in the dom tree i have another code pen example to help you understand in the html you can see that we have two dom nodes one for app component and the other for a modal component if you take a look at the jsx you can see that we have the parent component this component has a clicks state property which tracks the number of times you have clicked the button in the ui right here the parent component includes the modal component which in turn includes a child component and it is this child component which has the click button and of course the modal component is rendered using react dom dot create portal so it is a portal so the parent component is mounted on the app root dom node whereas the modal is mounted on the modal root dom node but if you click on the button in the ui you can see that the app still works number of clicks is now one i click again it is now two click again it is three and so on if you were to consider just the dom tree this event bubbling would have never happened since an event fired from inside a portal will propagate to ancestors in the containing react tree event bubbling still works so a portal behaves like a normal react child in every other way all right that is about portals in react thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe we'll see you guys in the next video